For centuries, scientists have tried to unlock the mysteries of the human body. MRI technology is the result of efforts by no fewer than seven Nobel laureates working over 50 years. An MRI machine can look deep inside our bodies, detecting even the smallest abnormalities or ripple of fluid in our brains. MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging, and it's a very modern tool that we use for looking inside the body. When we look inside the body, we can see things that are normal, and we also try to see things that are abnormal. And with MRI, we're able to see some things that we cannot see in any other way. I was 20 years old and a sophomore at UC Santa Barbara, uh, just enjoying life, living 300 steps from the beach and studying Shakespeare to my heart's content. Um, and I had some minor medical issues, uh, which required that I go to the doctor and get some blood tests done. In the course of the blood testing, they saw that one hormone, prolactin, was elevated, which was unusual in somebody that's not a nursing mother. Um, so the doctors ordered that I go get an MRI. Certainly at the time, I did not expect that I would go slide into the MRI machine, a normal college student, and slide out a patient with a brain tumor. So how was the MRI able to detect Jordan's tumor? How does it work? MRI is based on a relatively obscure phenomenon known as nuclear magnetic resonance. You have this huge magnet and you program up these different waveforms and a beautiful image appears. It's just, it's remarkable. When patients are placed in an MRI machine, they enter into a powerful magnetic field that is four to 7,000 times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. MRI involves the interaction of the body with three types of magnetic fields. The key to form an image in MRI is to control the magnetic fields experienced by the nuclei in a very clever way that allows you to determine the signals contributed by different nuclei in different regions of the body. It's quite a remarkable process because from a collection of very weak time signals, you can produce a beautiful image. It was just about 45 minutes after the test had been done and my phone rang and on the other line, it was the center where I'd had the MRI done, and they said, we know this is really unusual, but we need you to come back in immediately to get more pictures done. And I, at that point, just kind of go blank. I went back to the MRI center, and I, they put me back in the machine to do another round of images um, and get a better look at the pituitary, but they did take me in the room, and they showed me the picture of my brain on the screen, and clear as crystal, there was a mass. And that was a completely surreal moment for me. Well, as physicians, we're always looking for new tools in our toolkit so that we can do a better job. MRI really ushered in a new era of being able to see inside the body in ways that we've never been able to see before. So in particular, we're now able to see inside the, the brain, uh, all its different parts, and in some cases, even its different functions in ways that nobody could have thought that we'd be able to, to see say 10 years or so ago. We're able to do the same thing inside the spine. We're able to see roots and ra nerve roots and different parts of the nervous system. And likewise, we're able to do the same thing with bones and joints and tendons and ligaments now. We're able to see a lot of things that we just couldn't see before. Typically, patients, Mr. Smith, sees his doctors. Doctors thinks, you know what? I'm gonna get an MRI. So he orders MRI of the brain. That gets sent to radiology. We as a radiologist then look at that request and say, oh, this is MRI of the brain. This is a patient who's suspected to have a stroke. Okay, we need to check off this, this, this extra technique that we need to do as well. So then that order then goes to the technologist. Our role as technologists is to work fairly closely with the doctors and with the patients and kind of be the liaison in between and to help uh, the patients and to prepare them for their scan and to safely do all of their scanning. And then to make sure with the image quality that it's exactly what the doctors need in order to make their diagnosis. Okay, it's going to be our axial T2. And it's just going to show the fluid levels in your brain, okay? Here we go. Boop, 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 it's done. And then the technologist's job is over. And then the images that get reconstructed by a computer get pumped to the radiologist at the huge workstation. So this is a T2-weighted image where you can clearly see the cerebrospinal fluid in his sinuses and other regions of the brain. If there is a tumor, it'll appear very bright on a T2-weighted scan. 
We look at everything, look at the clinical history that's provided, make a diagnosis or sometimes a number of different diagnoses, and then our interpretation goes back to the referring clinician, the doctor that started, that kicked everything off. The night that I actually found out about the tumor, I cried my eyes out for a solid nine hours. And then after that, I just resolved, I'm not gonna cry about this anymore through the experience. Now we just need to go through with it. Um, so I did go back to school. I completed my winter finals. And then two days later, I came back up and had my surgery. From that moment on, I did my follow-up appointments and I did my MRI every single year. And with each year that it was clear, I just felt more and more grateful and blessed to be here. MRI has had an enormous impact on the practice of medicine. It's remarkable, it's just unbelievable. I take it for granted because I do it day in and day out. But when I really step back and think about it, uh, it really boggles the mind that you can produce images like that. Sometimes the MRI is beautiful just because it depicts people as we all are in ways that are common from one human being to the next to the next. And that, as a reflection of humanity, is beautiful in itself too. I think that the MRI is incredibly special for me. And it's gone from being this object of dread to really sort of a beacon of hope. I learned somewhere along the way that the men responsible for creating MRI technology were awarded the Nobel Prize, I think two weeks before I went in for my surgery. So it became highly personal for me. And if you zoom out and look at it, it's sort of incredible that this humongous magnet can be such a pivot point in somebody's life story. On March 13, 2003, pioneers Sir Peter Mansfield and Paul Latiber were awarded the Nobel Prize for their contribution to the invention of the MRI. On July 3, 1977, the first MRI was performed on a human being. Today, there are over 36,000 MRI machines helping patients around the world live longer and healthier lives.